what are your principles for finding the right ideas? It's a complicated uh, point, right? Is and, it, how much of it is gut feel? No, I, I think there, it, there is a science, okay. right? And I, th I think these things can be, I'm not sure you can quite put it in a computer, but you know, a lot of it is about systematically, uh, and, and, and actually it's quite a difficult task at, at, at Credo. We have a foundation called Credo Foundation, and we're working to launch a financial literacy platform uh, soon, which will take us probably another three or four months. And one of the subjects is how do you buy a stock, right? Or how do you invest? And it is an incredibly difficult question, but I'll, I'll just talk about it briefly. I think the first thing is about industry. You know, I mean, we are fundamentally growth investors, so we're not buying distressed assets and trying to make it better. So we are looking for sectors which are generally rising, right? And, uh, and are growing, right? So f for argument's sake, we're not the investors for Kodak, where you know your people are no longer using films, they're all moving to digital, right? Or we're not going to be investors in you know the postal service because that by and large is declining, right? So we are looking for sectors where there are intrinsic growth characteristics, you know, either uh, you know the demand for those. It's a new product, and you know, like for argument's sake, streaming, right? Uh, of of um, uh, like Netflix and so on and so forth. N not to say we're investors in that. Uh, but in some of the sectors we chose was, uh, was for example, convenience stores, right? That's a sector that's growing as the shift from un unorganized to organized has appeared. Uh, or the credit bureau, which we own, CITOS, the largest credit bureau in Malaysia. And we knew we had to educate Malaysia about responsible lending and responsible borrowing, and we've introduced a whole bunch of products. So, so, so firstly, is choosing the industry. The second thing we do is we actually go out and meet 300 companies a year. So we have some basic thesis. We start with, okay, we like the retail industry in Malaysia. So what we then do is we channel that team, and their job is to go and meet every retail company they can find in Malaysia. So they go on a Saturday, they list down every mall, they walk malls, and they list down every shop, and then they write to the companies, and then they go and see the owners. And in this lengthy process and painful process of so getting meetings and cataloging these meetings, we then identify interesting companies, right? And what are the characteristics of interesting companies? Well, firstly, we look for market leaders, right? We look for, in each segment, like one of our most successful investments in Malaysia is Mr. DIY, right? Which is now a household name. And we found them from one of these exercises. And we thought, wow, these stores are really busy. It took us a while to convince the owners, uh, YY, to actually meet us. But, you know, when we met them, we learned a lot about them. And what we could see is they had a clear proposition that was resonating well with consumers, right? So there's stores are busy, you know, people are shopping and so on and so forth. We could see a very smart and capable entrepreneur uh, who had high degree of integrity. So there's no point in being smart with no integrity uh, or high integrity and not capability. So you need people who are capable and, and have the integrity. Uh, so proposition, good entrepreneur, and then there's a report card. In our business, lots of people spin you a story about where they're heading. Yeah. But if you don't track their performance, you won't know what they said and what they've achieved. So often we see people over time, and we've cataloged this. When we have the third meeting, we look at the results and say, hey, you know, you told us you're going to do you know, 10 million of profit uh, this year, but actually you've done eight. What happened? Right? And uh, so there are very few companies that actually meet what they say they're going to do. Uh, and certainly Mr. DIY was one of those that, you know, every time they gave us a number, they exceeded it, you know. So you know you've got a great business. <laughs> ahead of that, right? so, so those are some of the basic characteristics, right, uh, of a business. Now, the third thing, of course, we get into the financials, right? And, you know, a lot of people get lost in financials. You can spend hundreds of hours and hundreds of lines of modeling. I look for really three or four very simple things. I look at the top line, how's the revenue growing, right? So we want, we're shooting for companies that can grow at least 15 or 20 percent. I then straight away look at the bottom line and say, how fast is the bottom line growing? Ideally, we want the bottom line to be growing as fast as revenues, right? So that means uh, the profit is growing uh, in line with revenue growth. Uh, the next thing I look at is return on equity, right? So Typically in Malaysia, the average return on equity for a company is probably 10 or 12 percent, right? So that tells you for every dollar of money that's been invested in the business, what kind of return are you getting? And if your return on equity is low, you know, if it's single digits, then you shouldn't be growing your business because you're destroying value every day, 
right? And uh, so that's a very important metric. The next thing I look at is risk. What are the risks in this business, right? So the risks can be industry shifts. You know, is this industry going to be disrupted the way digital has disrupted Kodak, you know, uh, or, you know, streaming has disrupted uh, videotapes and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's important, right? Risk. Risk uh, on the entrepreneur. I mean, it, does he look healthy? You know, yeah. is, he, is he, you know, uh, is, is he going to be around in, in the time horizon we have? And what are other risks that could affect you? Government legislation is an important risk. Competition is a, not one of the reasons for meeting lots of companies is you know all their competitors and you have a sense of what the competitors' strategies are and how that might affect you know, market share, pricing and so on in, in that industry. So risk is a very important assessment. And then finally, what should you pay for this asset? Which is a, it's a very difficult question because it's not a science, otherwise we'd all have it right. right? So why does somebody think that Old Town should, be, should trade at 10 times earnings the day before we bought it and a week later, it was trading at 15 times earnings, and a year later, it was trading at 20 times earnings, right? So it's the Brahmal name. <laughs> <laughs> so that we, we look at, uh, and I think the danger that a lot of uh, young people make, you know, who don't have a lot of history in investing, is they look at comparables in only in the last one or two years. And they say, well, that company trades at that multiple. You know, that we work, you know, trades at $47 billion, and that should be the benchmark for all co-working spaces. Well, the more important question is to look at uh, what Warren Buffett would say, look at a 10-year history and see how have companies in this sector traded over longer periods of time. And then, you know, there are going to be highs and lows, and you find some kind of, you know, average, you know. So, so if I had to summarize it, to, be a good in, to find a good investment, you want uh, to look at growth, return on equity, risk, and uh, you need to be in a good sector with a great entrepreneur, and you have to pay the right price. So it's, it's pretty easy. So. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Easier said than done. <laughs>